Have no fear, my friends. I know the market took a little bit of a step back today, but it all makes sense when you take a look at some of the technical levels that we hit. Dave Bartosiak here with another one of Dave's Daily Dives, where we go ahead and dig in the charts of the day, and then I give you five Zach's Rank number one strong buy stocks that are breaking out to new highs, so some trade ideas for tomorrow. But first, let's take a little look at the Russell... 2000 small caps now you guys know i'm a big fan of my fib extensions and this is a structure that i've been playing with for good or for better or worse is this mid-august to october move then you can see the retrace back to the 38.2 and extensions so first stop 23.6 kind of stall out Come back to retest this sort of 15-15 level. You have the 50-day right there, so obviously that's going to come into play also. That provided plenty of support. And then this 23.6 provides resistance. We break up through that 38.2% extension to the 50% extension. Also happen to coincide with that all-important psychological 1600 level. And what happens... First of all, yesterday we can't quite get over it. Today we do and then reverse. So not so bueno in the short term here. But I, this is what I think happened. I think we blew through this 1578. Came hunting for some stops on the south side of that. Certainly hit them. So we'll see if this can continue. Now, if the selling pressure does continue... Right here, this 1560 level, basically, uh, so we had, okay, so here's today, is Tuesday, right? You got last Friday, and then last Thursday. So last Thursday's low, pretty much spot on with this wick here. So that's what you need to look at, sort of the short-term line in the sand, that 1560 level on the Russell. Should we get into that, and it breaks that? Then we could have uh, the 50-day come into play, but that seems like an awful long ways away. And basically, the way that we've seen the the Russell recently, you know, we kind of retrace slowly. It's not like a dramatic drop. When you have these down days, they're typically followed by a day in the green. Um, even if it just retraces a bit of the step, there's still typically there's 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 motion in, in, in the, the positive direction, but with such a fierce down day here, that does imply that we could see further downside. But, hey, that's pretty healthy, right? Only one day to the downside. We still haven't taken out Thursday's lows, so really very high likelihood that we continue to uh, go higher still on the Russell. Then we're going to look at the NASDAQ composite because this was the other index that was most affected by the action today and... I mean, you just just zoom out and just just behold the uh, the Nasdaq composite. Um, buy the dip, continue to buy the dip. Give it some time. Let it get into the 50-day. If you're got a ton of money on the sidelines, obviously you don't want to chase it. Had intraday all-time high just today. Starting to come down a little bit. You can work a smaller FIB structure here if you're looking for some short-term support levels. But I don't even need to draw it up here. I can just tell you right here that swing low uh, should su provide some support. 7,100. 50 days seems a world away at 68.94. That's you know on the south side of 7,000. A retest of 7,000 would be healthy here. Uh, I don't even think we get there. I think 7,100 maybe. Uh, but that would take a few days. I don't, I don't think we're seeing sharp selling here. Just, you know, kind of stalled out after the open today. And then uh, more of a of a, an exhaustion of buying is what it seemed like rather than anything uh, more negative than that. Last thing I want to look at, I had this in uh, my write-up tonight. Just looking at this euro versus the dollar and noting how Basically, all of 2017 was just a big move for the euro versus the dollar. So, obviously, in this direction, this is all dollar weakness. Pulled back, broke below that 50-day moving average and on through the 23.6. I know that's kind of a in-between or FIB level not a lot of people look at, but that's kind of my first step that I look at. 
Uh, so, so this move in the fall, it's really just a, a counter trend move. Uh, didn't develop into anything dramatic. That has since broken. And now here we are back above the 50 day. Came down, confirm, and now the buyers have it. Huge breakout. Now this was a risk on day for the markets also. And um, 121. I don't think you're going to see it for a little bit. I think uh, I don't think 123 is the end of this rally. Um, as long as the markets, the equity markets, get on solid footing, I don't think you're going to see risk off in uh, in the euro. And I think that should lead to higher euro versus U.S. dollar prices here in the short run. Okay, enough of that. Five Zach's rank number one strong buy stocks for you to take a look at. The first. TD Ameritrade. Obviously, the asset managers are doing all right as the stock market continues rocking and rolling. Uh, no question it's the same thing here, but what do we have? We've got a breakout, my friends. So you have this wick here up into the 54s. It has broken out from that range, so this is definitely something you can chase. Plus, being it's TD Ameritrade, it's not the uh, highest beta stock. So buying here, putting the stops south of this swing lower even if you want to just all the way underneath the 50-day moving average because that's only three and a half bucks on a five dollar stock so it's about seven percent on a 50 three and a half bucks on a 50 dollar stock there we go um so around uh seven percent there um <clears throat> so it shouldn't be too bad for your risk parameter that's td ameritrade ticker a m TD. And again, these are all Zach's rank number one strong buy stock. So what does that mean? That means there have been estimate revisions to the upside recently, which could be helping these moves. Now, AutoNation, you got a gap up on earnings, which plows through previous levels, starts to stall out, gets up above it again, pulls back even more, gets up above it again. The, the, by it, I mean the previous highs. So there's a lot of Basically, the range is, 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 is trying to widen here um, for now the second time. I think that you can put stops down in this $55 range and hopefully chase this thing a little bit higher. Somewhat of a concern, the Commodity Channel Index is overbought. Now coming down to 111, one of my favorite, struck, favorite patterns to look for is this to come down to the zero line, bounce at the zero line when the stocks are near highs. So that's something I'm definitely looking for here on AutoNation, ticker AN. Back to the asset management side of things here with BlackRock. And uh, it's just the stock that never ends. Um, so this was a $400 stock in September, and now we're at $560. So I know there's a lot of you that probably don't want to chase a $500 stock, right? Probably maybe you want to mess around with it in the options market a little bit. Plus, we've got a few gaps up here. I would wait for it to cool off a little bit. Everything's very overheated. And I do understand they're going to make a ton of money with the tax cuts and all that. But it's getting a little rich here. Um, and, and, of course, if I pull up the valuation, we can have that conversation. I'm not trying to make that, um, uh, that argument right here because all we're doing is talking about the stock chart. But it's a little bit overbought, I guess, is what I wanted to say. And I would wait for it to cool off prior to entry. Then we've got, we're talking about cons. This is a retail name. Um, and it's one of those places where, uh, you know, you buy here, you pay here kind of thing, right? So, you, so you're typically... Um, lower on the credit scale, right? Because you're not just going to go out and use your credit card. You're going to get the, the credit from them. And, and I don't mean to be judgmental here, but or, or just kind of stereotype who's going into the store. But um, think uh, kind of, you know, high, high credit or a uh, high percentage sort of deal where they're making the juice on it. And uh, anyway, look at the move. So this is a highly leveraged play. Um, you're hoping that the wheels of credit keep going. Uh, and everything gets great. Tax cuts, obviously, that should help here a little bit. Um, look at the stock, though. 38 to 34, really the range that you're in, and it's up near the highs. 
So I'd be comfortable with buying this down here near 34. You could put your stops shy of the 50-day moving average. You've just recently had a crossover on the commodity channel index. So there's a buy there. So that's all looking good. So pretty much everything looking like it's going in the right direction. Uh, I wouldn't be afraid to make the play there, especially even if this thing goes range bound. The range is 34 to 38, so can make a few bucks while we're waiting for things to turn around. And the last one we're going to show here is going to be Dollar Tree. And uh, I'm honestly very surprised by the move that Dollar Tree's had too, from 65 all the way to 115. And it really hasn't looked back. The last time it got into the 50 day moving average was back in early August. Came within a couple of bucks in mid November, but it just, it's, it's running away. And uh, if this is something that you want to chase, I would wait till this commodity channel index came down just a bit. We have had spikes in it before, way up over that two hundred dollar range or two hundred range. Oftentimes, though, when it spikes, it does retrace a little bit, give you another opportunity to get in um, after it cools off a little bit. So that's what I'd be waiting for there on. Dollar Tree. Okay, folks, that's all I got for you here today on Dave's Daily Dive. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at Bartosiastics to catch up on all of the fun antics that I have here on Zach's. Uh, also, I am the editor of the Momentum Trader and Surprise Trader, so if you want to hear more Dave, you know where to go. Thanks so much for hanging out with me here on Dave's Daily Dive. I'll see you all soon.